You guys cannot tell me anymore that there is some type of Thursday night curse because all I see in the last few Thursday nights is people going, oh, I've had three players and I'm on 350 points. There's no Thursday night curse. Thursday nights are great for footy, especially if it's dry weather. That's what we're seeing at the moment. Dry weather footy equals points. And this game, this game has sure did it for us, didn't it? Especially if you had multiple players. I did not. I just had the one after trading out Hosking and, and that's how it goes. But there's obviously a lot to speak about in this video and there's lots of relevant players. There's lots of guys that obviously have the buy in the Panthers. There's a lot of guys that play Origin in this and with so many high scores, the question that is on all of your lips is what do we do with them now? Yes, they scored great, but what to do now? And Cleary to start things off, 106. So welcome back to him. I spoke about him in the preseason as being one of those guys that just did not have 100 in his game last year, which was very, very uncharacteristic. And it shows that this year his average is way up and where it was last year, he did, uh, yeah, he's only up 24K. It will be up a lot more after this 106. And he was priced up based on his average from last year, including one of those games where he got... Uh, sent off, which was a, a fun game to have its captain. But clearly, there we we spoke about him as, uh, you know, as we said, one of those guys that yeah you know, was absolutely dominant across all of the years, and, and he showed why this year. The only games that he has scored poorly is when Panthers were a little bit average, and when I say he scored poorly, he scored like sixty. So shows that that's kind of his flaw. He had an injury affected game in that Rabbitohs clash. And obviously, it sounds like, it, and seems like against the Rabbitohs, he does score a little bit less. So 63 in that secondary game in round eight, that was after they played the Knights and again, weren't playing very good. And uh, that 37 in the injury. Everything else, he has scored three tries this year. He hardly scored any last year at all. And he has five field goals. He's just a, a spectacular player, as we know. But last three weeks, as we I started getting worried about him with his groin injury, and then he goes 92, 79, and 106. So obviously doubted him slightly, well, Doubted him or just loved Nico. I'm not sure. Both, uh, I reckon, a little bit. There was a little bit of doubt because of the uh, the way that they were playing and obviously him not kicking goals. And that all turned around come round 10, which was obviously great news. And it was something that he was missing in those two games, which would have popped him over sort of that 70, 80 mark in, in a couple of them. And he missed out on that. And you can see here against those Roosters, 79, the 106 this week. Only three goals, which is which is wild that they, that they can score you know, a couple of tries there get a field goal and uh, and he get, he scores 106. So Cleary, what do you do with him heading into the buy period? So I spoke about in that latest video in the, the trades video and also the, the video before that with the questions, I uh, really delved into, you know, can you hold Cleary and Hines? If you only have one of them, then yes, 100%. If you have both, can you get away with it? And that's now going to, you know, be the, the question you're asking yourself is, can I and will I allow myself to trade in some four to 500K, 600K guys around Cleary and Nico in all the other positions to be able to be very helpful and score solidly, sort of 40 to 50, if you can get some undervalued guys, which there are obviously a few of them at the moment. Um, yeah, even Flegler in this game is one of those guys that's down in the in the 400s and is able to, is able to score a 40, you know, be a little bit undervalued, which is great. That's probably how you're gonna have to play it. You will also obviously need some half cover. So there's obviously a lot of players that can do that. There's the Phoenix Crosslands, the Katoas, Nick Arimas, Johnsons. You have Dylan Brown, who obviously plays 13, 16, 19, which I think is a kind of a must to have one of those type of players if you're pairing them with the Cleary and Hines. But as I say, guys, the, the biggest thing here is just, you know, if you own both of them, there's a question mark. If you own one, then it's just a clear hold throughout that period. He just scores way too well and so much better than everyone else, him and Nico at the moment. And obviously guys like Isaiah Yo are up there as well with Fafita. They're all scoring sort of 60, 70, but they don't have the upside and the hundreds that someone like Cleary has in them. I also didn't think that Carrigan had the upside of 100 in him as well. And he showed that without even a line break, or an attacking stat there that he's able to get a 96, which he was uh, he was at 100 as well with Cleary just before um, yeah, before updates there. So incredible stuff for Carrigan. He thought that you know for someone that still hasn't scored a try, he thought that that was going to be the way that he would get to this type of score, and he's really destroyed people that traded him out, hasn't he? So yeah, very very sad times for anyone who did. And if you did hold on, there still isn't a lot to be honest with you. I saw 18%. In the top 5k, nine people in the top 100 have him. So not ridiculous. And yeah, most people have traded him out. But to have 67 tackles for two misses, three tackle breaks, two offloads, 
and you know, chasing down players. He almost made a line break in that back end of the second half. Worked his absolute tail off to, to get to that 80 minutes. And I think that's great news for us being um, you know, non-owners of him in terms of uh, the being a New South Wales fan. You know, if Carrigan's coming out and playing 80 minutes and, and working so hard in this one, then hopefully he's a little bit tired come Origin 1, but I doubt that for sure. Uh, Carrigan, what do you do with him? For someone with that upside, I did see a few people trade him out this week too. For someone with that upside and, and has been scoring and, and hitting, he's now up to a 57 average. He's been hitting around that mark up until you know this week here. Is he someone worth keeping in the midsection? And, and you know, with them having buys in, in 13, 16, and 19, obviously, with him playing Origin, I think it's very much a 50-50. You can take this price rise that you get from him this week and the score, and you can transfer that into you know, a Tohu Harris. And, and looking at that, that does look very appealing. What's going to happen with him come round 14? That's something you need to think about. And you know, could you see him playing 80 minutes after Origin? I don't. So really, you're likely going to get 40s and 50s out of him at max in those after origin week so 14 17 um they have their buy in the next buy in 20 i believe so you know there's a bunch of reasons why you would look to trade him out and i think he's a 50 50 i can understand why you would trade him out i can understand why you would hold there's a lot of options in that midsection and you know he could be a guy that you do move on in that time Isaiah, Yo, speaking of another guy that is absolutely dominant and is you know the second best mid in the game averaging 64 .4 plays 80 minutes every week. What would you expect from him coming after Origin? If he plays close to 80 minutes in you know, on Wednesday night in you know, a week and a half, do we expect him to be able to, to back that up and, and play big minutes for the Panthers? I probably don't. So I see him as only playing sort of the 80 minutes in round 15. You know, I definitely expect him to play. He's one of those types of guys, obviously the workhorse 80 minutes every week. But you know, 50 minutes, I'd say you know, he'd be quite okay with that. That would feel like a jog, jog in the park for him, you know, a bit of a training run or something like that. So, you know, but that being, that means he goes down to about that 40 to 47, somewhere in that bracket, unless he gets some attacking stats. So Isaiah as well, he's one of those guys that's going to be very difficult to hold. But you know, the difference between him and Payne Haas is that you know, Yo is, an, is is an accumulator. So if Payne Haas was to get the same minutes as Yo in a 50 in a 50 minute game then that means Payne Haas is going to score way more than, than Yo. If if Haas was to play 80 minutes, you obviously know what the result's going to be. So we've seen it before and it's incredible. So with those two, I think Payne Haas is, is more likely to be a hold because of the minutes that he's likely going to play in round 14 and therefore the score that he can get. So Isaiah, I think he's a clear buy-in you know, back after the uh, origin period and sort of round 2021. 20, he will be one of those best mids, so if he can get in there, and hopefully for us, he's that little bit cheaper. He maybe gets to a down to around 800k by that time. So I completely understand if you want to hold him. I completely understand if you want to sell him as well. Herbie Farnworth with the 62, so massive running meters for him, 244. I think he had like 28 runs or something stupid in that one. Seven tackle breaks, two offloads to hand in that one with 13 tackles for one miss, one line break. So showing that he's you know, obviously one of those guys that can be one of the top scorers in the center position, averaging 45. But thankfully for us, there's a bunch of guys doing that little bit better than him. Dylan Edwards, I cannot wait to own him. I was kind of hoping he scored about a 50 or a 47 or something like that in this one, but he just shows his value to this side. If he gets nowhere near origin, I'm so excited to own him in 14. I think he's very close to a must have in that wing fullback position. There's so many guys that are being pretty average in general. And I think Edwards in amongst, you know, Joey Manu, if he, if he happens to play some time at, at fullback, if he goes back to six, they're the two guys that you're going to want in the wing fullback position. And I can't wait to own Edwards from 14 all the way through to lead by in round 19. So if you want to jump on the bandwagon with me, then, then go for it. He will be a slightly up and down, obviously, but with the Panthers playing better than they were of uh, yesteryear, he was still scoring pretty well in a lot of those games, but you know, the odd one, he would have a bit of a low one. Yeah, even that Tigers game where they, they lost, he he was still able to get a, a sort of a mid-50 score there. So Edwards, I'm super excited about having him my side in 14. If you hold, if you have him now, you have to hold, obviously. Payne Haas, I just spoke about him in, in comparison with Isaiah Yo. The minutes that he's going to get after Origin are likely going to be the 48 to 53 kind of mark. And he can still score really well in that time. He'll, he'll know that he's playing lesser minutes and he can come out and just be a bit of a terror and go absolutely nuts. So in this one, he just had the one offload. He had the two tackle breaks of 45 tackles. 45 tackles is crazy for, for him. Uh, obviously a back and forth affair. 
Panthers had the ball plenty, uh, and the running meters were very much down because at the time that he was on, for the most part, the uh, Panthers had plenty of ball, and you know, they, they threw three or four bodies at him. Um, and at the start, there was a couple of uh, early missed tackles. There was one, uh, two on Jerome Luai, there was one on you know, Payne Haas, and one on uh, Reese Walsh as well, just bumped him bumped him back. So, yeah, that was uh, that, it sounded like that was fun for the uh, the Brisbane fans to watch anyway, because uh, Jerome Luai seems to be very much hated at the moment. Okay, my first little complaint of the game, I uh, told myself I would try not to do it, but Hosking missed two tackles in the first three minutes of the game, clear as day, and then missed one at the back end. The only one they picked up was the one in the in the back end there, so that was pretty frustrating there as to why that wasn't picked up, but yeah, it happens sometimes apparently. Don't know how that didn't get picked up, but uh, yeah, it would have been, what, 52. So, Sills played great. The minutes is what exactly what we expected, and... Personally, for me, I needed to trade him out anyway because I had no, you know, I have Lukey as an edge coming into, you know, into round 13. I also missing a mid, so it was like get Hopgood now and then get one more for next week. And, you know, if there's any other further injuries and stuff, I would need to trade more. So I did need to move on from one of Hosking or Trent Leoro. Hosking being, you know, that higher break even, Trent being cheaper. You know, 50, 58k cheaper. It uh, it meant the Zach was to go in this one, and he played amazing. You know, four tackle breaks, uh, an offload to ground. We had the turnover tackle as well, and only four in the negatives there to go along with his work ethic. They use him plenty. Him and Sorensen both have been amazing, by the way. Um, yeah, Sorensen, hey, made so much cash this week, this year. As soon as he went to that edge, uh, obviously, you know, there was a high probability that he's going to go back to the middle, but they've given him a chance and he's been absolutely great. So if you did pick up Sorensen, there aren't a lot, obviously 2%. I think a few people would have brought him in after last week for sure. But um, yeah, great, great work, great work there. So Hosking's the interesting one. As I say, guys, you, you can now just hold all the way through to, to 19 or something like that if you like, but most people are going to have to get rid of him anyway to get a playing 13 or close to a 13 in their, in their squad for round 13 there. Sunit Taruva, he had a great game there, 51 guys. It was exactly what you're looking for. For him, uh, for those that own him in Supercoach or or Fantasy there, both were you know, great scores, 51 here. I think 80-odd, uh, I think, in, in Supercoach. I traded him out a long time ago, considering he was a uh, basement price there, and he was not here. Uh, Madden, so 47 for him. Obviously, the one game he's going to get, and yeah, he was great. Did his job. Uh, you know, it's obviously hard to get through this uh, Penrith defense. That's the thing, guys. Their defense is just incredible, and yeah, it shows that that's how you win. Premierships, and I think uh, Guru just put up, put up a great stat this morning or last night that the uh, the Panthers have conceded 14 points since that Tigers matchup, and that was a low-scoring one anyway in the wet, so incredible what they can do, uh, but they look great. To oh, okay, what do you do with him? Look, wing fullback sucks, so he's, he's lost 41K, he's averaging 40. Do you think he's worth keeping his side? I'm not sure. I think, look, he's, he's someone that you could definitely look to move on. Wing fullback position is really tough, so it's going to be hard to hold him when he misses 13, potentially 14 or 16. You know, it, um, that makes it very tough. So I can understand why you would look to move on from him. I know there's not a lot that have him still, but yeah, that's that. Liam Martin, I expect him to completely get straight onto that New South Wales side, probably in the starting side. He's four offloads. They couldn't keep him down. The, the four tackle breaks in his 88 meters and 34 minutes. He'll be straight back into the Origin Arena and yeah, great news for Fitler and the New South Wales side because he is a beast. He's so good at footy. Uh, exactly what we need in that team. Flegs, 40 in 47. He got up four points in updates overnight, which was ideal. 30 tackles, 102 meters, negative six with the two missed tackles and a penalty. So not terrible, no sin bins this week. If you did trade him in either this week or last week, you picked up, you know, obviously two 40, a 42 and a 40 for a 41 average is, yeah, about what you would hope for, really, like 40, 45. He has less minutes this week, but he obviously went big last week and he'll, he'll be needed next week for big minutes. So if you're still looking at him, guys, he will get sort of 55, 60 minutes or so from next week and be a real helpful player. I'm not sure if he did his origin chances any justice this week, but he's definitely on their radar as well as a potential option in the middle. Uh, Walter has actually played all right this game for, you know, points wise. He got 45 tackles and 39 points. How good. Uh, Tapa, ooh, had a good game as well. He's, you know, a bit of an awkward price. Anyway, if you're looking at any of these sort of forwards, Cobo, Stags, 37, 34. Walshy, 33. Wow, okay. There's a lot to unpack here because there's so much going on in his game. He has three kick defusals, a couple of penalties, 
320 kick meters. So without Reynolds, that was obviously up. That will drop down to, you know, maybe 120 or something like that from from next week. So you got extra points on there. You made it 100 meters. It is just, you know, important to know, guys, that they're up against Penrith Panthers. And, and we know that wing fullback, uh, fullbacks, especially outside backs in general, do seem to really struggle against the Panthers. So this is obviously good for his price for those non-owners. And I still think that he's a solid option next week. Next week, It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Drinky and if he becomes the guy that we want, considering he'll be you know playing 13 and 16 and not missing uh, and missing 15, but not missing 16 like, like Walshie does. So yeah, up to you which way you want to go for it. I think we need to watch Drinky and make that decision on him. And we will obviously discuss Walshie as we go, but he's still on my radar. The 33 just stops him from going massively up in price like he like he could have done uh, and obviously a bit nicer as a, as a viewer uh, myself uh, with with Payne Haas and also Walshie not going as big not captain in Cleary is annoying but just means Hines yes it has to beat him again like last week beating by seven would be nice 113 every chance against the Knights and that's what uh in in a uh, indigenous round for sure so Walshie yeah 33 yeah could have been worse kind of back to some of those lower scores, which, you know, it wasn't, still wasn't terrible. Still had a try assist in there. Could have had a try, but uh, yeah, it was a clear knock on. Let's talk about the refing decision, by the way. Um, that one that he got the penalty off. How bad is the bunker? Like, how can you not see that? He literally ran straight at him, eyes for him, and then goes, I'm going to knock him out and then turn. Like, what is that? And thank God the ref stepped in. Because that would have been absolute debacle, and that would have completely changed the game. It was the correct call. He took him out, so that's great. And if you are a Broncos fan and you're not happy about it, then that's fine. You know, you would you would have allowed the bunker to make another terrible decision, which may have helped your team. And I still think you would have lost, but yeah, for them to for him for the bunker to be that bad in that in that situation, he then goes, "Oh, I don't that doesn't look right to me." And then he looks, he looks at it again, a little bit closer and obviously notices his mistake. And is like, oh, yep, he has no eyes for the ball. He literally said on there, he has eyes for the ball. When? <laughs> when, the, when he'd knocked the bloke out, gave him a little uppercut to the chin, little forearm to the face, and, and, then, and then turned around. Oh, hilarious. But uh, yeah, I'm glad they got it right. Let's just say that anyway. Um, but yeah, that one where they, Flag one was just a, a clear knock on and then they just went, yeah, play on. And then it went... Payne Haas offload, Carrigan offload into Walsh try. With, and I was just like, you're kidding me. Thank God they, they pulled that back because I was blown up. <laughs> I was like, that's even to the eye, it was just a clear knock on. So they're still working this whole game out, aren't they? It's like they've never reffed it sometimes, these bunkers. Like, isn't these bunker guys, the, they're meant to be there and, and have had all this experience and, and can look at every angle because they're under the microscope. Everyone sees exactly what's happening there. Yeah, the refs can sometimes get away with things because it's in the heat of the moment. But when you slow it down like that, there should be no mistakes. And if it's a 50-50 call, that is fine. But when it's like that, black and white like that, wow. Shocker. PG got 20. Biggest news here really is the Fisher-Harris had a 16 in his game here. So he had lower minutes. It looks like in the early part of the game, he had a mixture of three missed tackles and a knee injury. So injured that knee again a little bit. So got a little knock and he did come back and play a little bit in the second half to try and help them win. Uh, but I think thankfully for him and anyone who owns him, I know a couple of people who have brought him in that he gets a rest next week. And I think that's gonna be very helpful and he'll come back fit and firing and big minutes in sort of round 14. But yeah, if you, if you own him, if you played him this week, very, very frustrating. And he gets a little bit cheaper if anyone is looking for him in round 14. So how's the buy next week? And you can make your decision from there. Mitch Kenny, if you still own him, he needs to be rid, get gotten rid of. He was just, he was trying to whack people and just it just vol involves missed tackles. Even if you whack him, it's just bouncing off and it's a missed tackle. So that's that. And then Sonny Luke with 10 in his 17 minutes. So not very good at all. The minutes there, he tried to bundle over from dummy half like twice in one set. It was just like, what are you doing? He tried to get past Carrigan and Haas. Yeah, sure. It's exactly the, the spot you're going to get through. Anyway, that's the uh, Thursday wrap. There's so many different players to think about in this game and you know, going forward for next week in round 13. I can't wait for these next few weeks. It's going to be absolutely crazy and you know, so much fun. So good luck with your Friday games and your Saturday and your Sunday. Have a good weekend.